Welcome to Modern Musings, conversations with the maiden mother and crone, looking at ourselves and the world from the lens of the 21st century. Hello and welcome back. My name is Amber and I'm here with my co-hosts, Kristen and Cindy. Hello. Hi. And today we are, well, it's summertime, right? So today we're going to talk about sugar, eating sugar-free in the summer, sugar-free recipes for the summer. Now, um, I am, uh, I'm not a diabetic, but my parents both were, so I like to keep the sugar low whenever I am eating dessert. And uh, for the most part, I like to stay on the low-carb diet. So, um, yeah, I'm always looking for sugar-free suggestions and everything like that. Um, Probably uh, one of my favorite things to eat during the summer would be ice cream. Or snow cones, actually. Mm, more, I love yes. snow cones. Yes, more Shaved specific, ice. like Shaved a ice. snow cone would be like my favorite thing in the summer. And uh, we have a we have snow cone places out here. Um, one of my favorite places to go to would be Bahama Bucks. Oh yeah, that's and, shaved ice, not snow cone. Well, okay, which, shaved, which are different. Shaved ice, then. Yes. <laughs> How, snow what? cones are pellets yeah it's very crunchy it's very crunchy and shaved ice is actually a block of ice that they scrape very it's fine like shaving snow versus hail yeah <laughs> pretty much well let's get technical then okay <laughs> my favorite shaved ice yes. place is called bahama bucks that's a good one and um yes they do have a sugar-free menu mm-hmm do I like their sugar-free flavors? Um, I will tolerate them. You know, I kind of feel the same way. I don't think I've ever had a sugar-free flavor. Um, the, I haven't had one of those. We forever. we go to Lynn's Tropical Snow, which is a shaved ice place, um, and it's just a local little booth that's set up every summer nearby. And they do have a limited selection of sugar-free items. Mm-hmm. And I've had, I have a favorite flavor that I have there. And after I was diabetic, I went and found that they had that flavor in sugar-free version. Mm-hmm. And it was tolerable. It was not as delicious as the other. And and I will say, I eat a lot of sugar-free stuff because I am diabetic. Mm-hmm. So... I drink Coke Zero, I drink sugar-free creamers in my coffee, all that stuff. And if something is just tolerable, that means they didn't make it very well to me. Yeah. Um, Because there's so many great sugar-free sweeteners out there Mm -hmm. that there should never be anything that has that horrible aftertaste. And that's what they have. I I would say like um, a good brand, like especially for coffee... And um, maybe shaved ice as well if uh, a company does do that. I know um, a lot of coffee places use this brand, the Torani syrups. Uh Uh They make pretty good Mm sugar-free syrup. Yeah, I do like Mm -hmm. those. I've had a couple of those in my coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Starbucks had some some decent syrups, sugar free syrups as well for a while, but they've gotten rid of all of the ones I like. Yeah, so. they just have vanilla, vanilla. now. Like yeah. that's the only. Yeah, I remember a few years ago that when I first uh, had bariatric surgery and I was like getting back into drinking coffee and stuff like that. Starbucks had a lot more. Um, mm-hmm. They had a sugar-free mocha. Yeah. They had um, sugar-free caramel. So they did the sugar-free cinnamon dolce. That was latte. my favorite right there. Yeah. And now and they just have that do. have cold. Yeah. Yeah. Now they just do the sugar-free vanilla, which is very limiting, limited to those on the keto diet or those that are diabetic and don't want to have like a thousand pumps of sugar in their coffee. Right. Right. 
Well, and and just I, you know, that kind of brings up a a thing that kind of irks me because it is so easy to make sugar-free items and and obviously there's a huge demand for sugar-free flavors out there or else there wouldn't be as many sugar-free things out there as there are so why is it that some companies just are so resistant to putting out they'll put out a fat-free something Mm -hmm. they'll put out a gluten-free something um but they won't make a sugar-free version of whatever it is you know and it it, it's very frustrating because there's so many things that I know could be made sugar free. One of the one of the examples that we talked about on a previous podcast was the um, sugar free sweetened condensed milk. Um, we found a recipe for it mm-hmm. for for us to make it at home. It, it's very co- you know cost prohibitive. Not really cost prohibitive. It really but doesn't cost that much. It's yeah. the timing. It's it takes a lot of time to um to make it. Yeah. As it would to make Real. regular Eagle brand or whatever, you know, myself mm-hmm. at home. It takes a long time to do that. So I have to ask why doesn't um Eagle brand company make a sugar free version of their sweetened condensed milk because it is possible the we've done it. The process is the same. The process is exactly the same. Free. Is it because they know and, and this is being I'm being very cynical with it here. Is it because they know that the sugar free version is not as addictive as the sugared one? Oh, for sure. And they probably think that not enough people will buy it, so it'll be a waste of money in the long I, run. I, I think feel they're the other absolutely way of... wrong about yeah. that. I really believe that if that sugar-free version was out there, more people would use it, more people would buy it. People Especially... are going for things that say zero on them. Well, well yeah. I mean, you would think as a big company that they may have considered it. Yeah. And just kind of, because they do have a fat-free version or yeah. whatever. Yeah, so. so so if there's fat-free versions, why not a sugar-free version? And and there's a lot of things, you know, there's a lot of things you can buy sugar-free, like Cool Whip. Cool mm-hmm. Whip's a great one. And the sugar-free Cool Whip, to me... It doesn't taste any different it, than the regular. It does cool not. Man, it's, I could eat that by the spoonful. Oh, gosh, that's my yeah. sugar-free dessert for the summer. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah drop I mean, that on a bunch of fruit. It, yeah, just wait it until and, it's like, just halfway fruit. thawed yeah. and then eat it. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's a good. That would be. That's a good base for making your own like sugar-free ice cream or sorbet, or something like that. Yeah, you could. Um, you could mix it with, you know, like have sugar-free Jello, put some fruit in it, put mm-hmm. that on there. That's that's an awesome little. And it tastes dessert. great, and mm. it doesn't cost any different. Yeah, and it comes in the exact same size container. That's my irritation. Um, yeah, with that's... the sugar-free stuff. Um, so, like in in the summertime, you want like sweet drinks, right? And um, you know, being like a bariatric or diabetic, you have to stay away from juice. But man, just sometimes I get the sweet tooth for a little glass of juice. Like I just want a small little yeah. cup. And um, the other day I saw that lemonade. M- I get like a yeah. want for lemonade a lot. Minute Maid actually makes Minute Maid Zero because they're a Coca Cola company, and, and yeah. so it's it's basically. I mean, it's I diet like lemonade. it. It's okay. It's not my favorite. Well. I had their fruit punch because that was always one of my that's my favorite, favorite flavor. flavors of juice growing up, mm-hmm. and I had the Minute Maid Zero fruit punch, and it tasted just like the regular. So I'm like, perfect. I'm gonna okay, go on I my Walmart tried that. and bought it. I just bought some the other day, but Minute Maid juice was always like one of the cheaper juices that you could buy like a whole gallon of, right? For like a dollar mm-hmm. back in the day, it was like a dollar twenty five, two bucks. It's probably more now. But literally, the one that I purchased was like this itty bitty tiny bottle, and it was gone in like three glasses. And I was like, "Well, dang, oh, where'd sure. that go?" Yeah, yeah, it probably cost you like five dollars. The sugar right? version so comes much... in a gallon jug. Yeah, yeah. but the sugar free only comes it's in, in a small. really small one. And I was like, "Well, that's rude." <laughs> and the price on it is really high. And yeah, and I'm like, it, "Okay, that sweetener doesn't cost that much." I don't think I. It really doesn't. It really I mean, doesn't. no, it really I doesn't. I buy this giant bag of the yellow 
aspartame Splenda, or Splenda. Yeah. yeah the Splenda I buy a huge bag of that and you, it's spoon for spoon and it costs the same as sugar yeah 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 the only thing I would Might say cost that less, costs actually. more probably would be the swerve yeah swerve does cost more um and it comes also in smaller very contain- small very, yeah, small, very bags. small containers so it makes it a little rough to um bake with but it Oh my gosh, it tastes so good. Yeah, Swerve is probably like one of my favorite things to bake with. And just to have like, um, instead of just have sugar around the house, I just have the Swerve mm-hmm. instead. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like a game changer for those that if you're looking for like a certain kind of flavor that's not... I can't really stand the sweet and low flavor. Oh, no, and I, I don't, can't really stand the Splenda flavor as well. I don't like anything that has that af- aftertaste. So the aspartames, the, um, what's the blue stuff? I can't remember what Equal. That, equal. Yeah, that no, one doesn't taste, for, I don't like that one either. Um, I do like uh, Truvia or Stevia products because they don't have an aftertaste. Yeah, they're, but they're more very natural. sweet. And they're, but they're natural. And the, and then the, some of the monk fruit stuff is pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the swerve as far as baking and stuff, that's my go to because it measures cup for cup, just like sugar. Um, the, mm-hmm. the confectioner's sugar, the powdered sugar behaves like powdered sugar. The granulated sugar behaves like granulated sugar. It, it does dissolve with heat, but you can't make a glaze make with a it because candy. Yeah, good yeah either, it doesn't. Yeah. You can't make a candy because once it cools, it goes back to that crystalline form. But um, you can make some good cookies with it. Oh though, yeah, it like makes that. really good cookies, and um, and they also have a brown sugar. It's not a pure brown sugar. It's like a blend, mm-hmm. um, but it's pretty good too. And and I I do a lot of baking with those um, these days. I. They're not like I'm a diabetic, so really low carb is better too. So they're not the perfect cookies um, because I've still got flour and and Chocolate things chips. like that that have those carbs. But but it it's a lot lower carb and and it's sugar free. So you know, except for the natural sugars that occur in the in the carbs. So that yeah that helps. You know, it's better than eating a full sugared oatmeal cookie or whatever you know i can have Mm -hmm. my pretend pretend sugar in it yeah i know this one isn't a dessert but we made this is definitely a summer food Mm -hmm. um you know how you can get like thai food and they have like the cucumbers Mm -hmm. that are kind of like pickled but they're sweet yeah um so in that recipe it called for like a half a cup of sugar we used monk fruit in that instead cook you heat it up on the stove with the vinegar Uh and the water and that actually like melted and dissolved the texture it never like it never recrystallized it didn't oh that's good to know and i felt like because it wasn't sugar i wasn't like you know here husband eat like sugary you know yeah. cucumbers right so i i liked that and i was like you want to drink the juice drink the juice you know <laughs> <laughs> i don't care because it's not sugar you know <laughs> yeah i mean there are better brands out there nowadays than there were when i was a kid and my dad was diagnosed with diabetes mm-hmm. and it was really hard like um he had a, a he had a sweet tooth and so my mom would buy him these cookies, but the cookies didn't have any flavor. Yeah, my my sister was a type 1 diabetic. Um, she was diagnosed when she was 13 years old. And I remember my mom coming home with um, sugar-free pie filling, pie, sugar-free pineapple pie filling. Mm. And, pineapple pie. and, you know, the hope was that it would taste like a like a fried pie or you know what or oh, yeah. but a pie okay. you know you've had That's a jelly stuff yeah. yeah 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 well it has chunks of pineapple in it too but it's really you know a pineapple pie is pretty good that stuff was ju- it just tasted like chemicals and th- you know this is in the 80s so um really a lot of things have changed since then obviously but i like i say i there's been so much you know we've got 
Coke Zero, you know, all of the drink products have a Zero version or Even, whatever. Uh, uh, Reese's chocolate and Hershey's has have zero sugar versions. And those yeah, taste just and like they everything. are the yeah the sugar. Yeah. free. I have a sugar free Jolly Ranchers over here that are like to die for. Um, and the you know the sugar free chocolates are really good. Mm -hmm. it, they're just ordinary chocolate. Like they taste like a Hershey bar or they taste like a Reese's cup. Um, it. If you've if you don't eat sugar free items on a regular basis, you could probably taste the difference. But if you eat sugar free items all the time, you're probably used to the very slight mm -hmm. thing that that some of the the sugar alcohols and the monk fruit and stuff kind of have. They do have a, a slight aftertaste, but nothing like the the pink stuff or the yellow stuff of of old and. You know, if you're used to eating sugar-free things, it's great. So why don't some of these other companies have those, you know, why isn't there a sugar-free Snickers? Why isn't there um, sugar-free marshmallows? We were just talking about this earlier. Why do you yeah, have to make uh, marshmallows? Yeah, because right. we were talking about sugar-free recipes for the summer, and one of my favorite things to have during the summer are s'mores. Oh, yum, yum, And yum. I found a sugar-free s'more recipe and then Cindy says to me, she goes, well, what do you do with the marshmallows? And I'm like, well, you have to make the marshmallows yeah. from scratch. And you have to make the graham crackers from scratch. Sugar-free graham crackers. Because there aren't any yeah. sugar-free graham crackers. Sugar-free marshmallows. Why doesn't Nemisco have any sugar-free cookies? But you there know? is sugar-free chocolate, so you're covered there. <laughs> right. Why? I'm, you know, oh, I'm my just God. If they made sugar-free Oreos, <gasps> oh. game changer. Because you can make yes. pies. Ice cream, you know, oh yeah, Sunday toppings like yeah, Oreo. Graham, that's all you gotta do is make us some sugar-free Oreo cookies. Yeah. I will buy sugar twice as many Oreo cookies if you make them sugar-free. Sugar-free <laughs> Oreos, sugar-free Chips Ahoy, sugar-free. Um, well, there are the some cracker, the graham crackers, local bakeries that'll make something like that, like the unrefined bakery, like they yeah. will make stuff like that but like there's no like uh right but they're very again they're very expensive because yeah. they're making Shelf them in small batches too. yeah whereas you know the, the, someone of the power with the power of nabisco can make very large batches for very low cost and and sell them at a low cost but i guarantee you if they did make them they would make them higher cost than the regular oreos in a smaller quantity yeah, yeah. And or a smaller quantity or both, yeah. And okay, well, okay. There now that I'm thinking about it, there is a brand, and it's not like exactly like an Oreo, but like a cream sandwich cookie. There is a brand called Catalina Crunch that you can get at like a small Whole Foods mm -hmm, type store mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that it resembles an Oreo, not the Oreo right. brand, but it's like right. a generic cream cookie. Mm -hmm. That is keto, sugar free, low okay. sugar. Do you do but you find it's that very it tastes expensive? But and does it right. taste like an Oreo? Because I've had well, other no, brands just, because they don't taste, taste like an Oreo. Yeah, it tastes like the other brand, yeah. sugar free, right. not Oreo. Now sugar -free. I will say that um, Vortman's mm -hmm. makes the sugar wafers, mm -hmm. and they make quite a few sugar free varieties. But often the stores don't carry. All more the than flavors. They'll yeah. only carry one or two flavors. But hey, um, they are very good. And uh, HEB also makes their own variety of those. And my husband said they actually taste better than the Vortman's do. So I, I, I was, you were talking about sugar-free Oreos. And I was like, man, I wonder if they actually do. So I did do some research just now. And they do make a sugar-free Oreo. But I've never seen it in the store. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay, you may have that's, to link that I information. I think that's really what the problem is, is that there are these sugar-free desserts. And They're the stores not, like, are not easily yeah. accessible. Because Hershey does make like a sugar-free syrup, um, like a chocolate syrup like yes, you would put I've on had that. ice cream. It's I okay. know, it's all right. But let me tell you, that got me through my surgery because I could add that to my vanilla or flavorless right. you know, protein shake. Yeah. And uh, I... That I liked that. I depended on that. And I found that I couldn't find it at every store. Right. And so when I could find it, I bought like multiples of them. Right. 
Yeah. Um, we we did talk about the like the Nilla wafers. You know, there there are a sugar free version of the Nilla wafers. Um, I had it on my podcast. Uh, it was another sugar free dessert podcast, I think, that we talked about, and um, where I made my banana pudding, and I will link that on the pot on the heard it on the podcast. Um, but those uh, those were really good vanilla wafers, and um, I see Kristen over there searching. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't. Them. I'm just not finding them in, near me. Yeah, so. the the closest I'm seeing where I can find sugar free Oreos would be Hivey stores, and that's up north. Yeah, yeah. I was like, what's so, five four seven five five area code or zip yeah, code? <laughs> not here. <laughs> no, you not can't here. even find them on Amazon. I looked on Amazon. Wow. See, that's and to me, I'm I I'm flabbergasted why that is not available here. It it could be that it's a test market. You know, maybe they're testing them. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. The Ohio Valley or Florida or somewhere, who knows? But um, I just I don't I don't comprehend. I I really don't. Um, there are companies though that do make these sugar free products that are really good. And you know, I was mentioning those cookies. Um, I can't remember if it's Fortman's or it's Murray's, Murray's that the makes shortbread the shortbread cookies. Mm-hmm. It's Murray's. Um, Murray makes shortbread cookies that taste just like pecan sandies but there are fewer of them in the package than a package of regular Mm -hmm. keebler pecan sandies i guess because the idea is i guess maybe if you're buying sugar-free you're not gonna eat as much maybe or they just want to amp up the price i think they they know that you're they've got you over a barrel that that's the only option there is and they can charge you as much as they want for as little as they can get away with. I really do. Of the other like sugar-free brands of stuff, uh, I have to applaud Jello brand. Man, they've been making they've been making sugar-free stuff for years. I didn't, and I don't we I think we always got sugar-free jello, didn't we? Uh no, well, if my sister was around, yes. But um but I not always. I prefer sugar-free jello but, over the regular but, jello. Hey, you don't have to add sugar to it. Yeah. Well, you don't add sugar to the other jello either. Oh, well, you're maybe thinking it's Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid. Oh, you're, you're thinking right. Kool-Aid. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Kool-Aid, thing. Kool-Aid has always had a sugar-free version I mean, for years. Country time. Yeah. Country that... time lemonades. Um I'm trying to think, but yeah. Oh, fudge sickle. Uh, one of my favorite summertime treats is you know, fudge sickles and fudge sickle actually makes a sugar free fudge sickle. It only has 40 calories. I think it, that's for one pop, you know, like mm-hmm. you break it in half and you eat one pop. Well, actually, I don't think there's a break a hat. I think it's just the long one skinny pop. They may pop. not do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they do that anymore. But, um, but oh, those are so good. And, you know, 40 calories. Yum. I know back when I was going through my surgery, I used to, um, make my own sugar-free popsicles like um from the sugar-free jello mix or um just like sugar-free juice but i mean you know like that's more expensive than just going and buying like a 50 bag of popsicles or whatever yeah. but i also would um make like a protein fudge sickle type things with my protein Protein shakes shakes, yeah Mm -hmm. and I still do that occasionally but I don't really do that much anymore I since my surgery like uh I yeah I still eat sweets but it's very like a rare occasion and it must be like a low sugar type thing one of my favorite like uh low sugar treats would be like a sugar-free licorice really ew uh, you like the red one though right Not yeah the black. i love the oh, red okay. one My yeah. oh, no no black no black licorice Ugh. um yeah i like the red licorice like the sugar-free <laughs> red licorice yeah. So those, yeah those are, are kind always... of candies and stuff i don't really like i'm not a big sweets person so i'm sitting here thinking like mm. I'm over here like the one recipe I thought of was cucumbers. <laughs> but no, I I mean, kind of like we were talking earlier about well, like yeah. summer flavors. Yeah, well, what flavors and, do you like? Yeah, well, I, 
I like light things. Yeah. Like, well, and even my desserts, it, even if I'm going back to talk about desserts, I like lighter fare in, it, not fruitier even Fruitier in the summer. Fruitier, um, less dense foods. Right. So I eat a lot. I like, I prefer things like jello or fruit salads. Um, those are easy to do sugar free. Um, one of the recipes when I was pregnant with Stephen, uh, I was, I was gestational diabetic at that time. And my doctor actually suggested, uh, a version of short, like short strawberry shortcake, but it was made with, uh, angel food cake because a 12th of a slice, a 12th of the cake is a serving of angel food cake and you can put fresh fruit on it and some of that sugar-free cool whip and you've got a great little summer dessert right there like my fresh, grandma fresh used to make fresh that peaches. all the time yeah. in the summer of uh, just a small slice of angel food cake sugar-free topping and strawberries yeah yeah isn't there like some kind of ice box cake where you like cut the Angel food cake in half. Yeah, and then yeah, you put, there like, is. Yeah, some kind of ice creamy thing oh, inside, maybe. and then you top it back off. I've and, seen oh, videos yeah. for stuff like yeah. that mm-hmm. where you do a little thin slices of angel food cake, and then you put like um ice creamy type stuff inside, and then you put fruit, and then mm-hmm. you do another thin slice of angel food cake. Or whipped cream probably in there as well. Yeah. And then you do another layer and then like top it off with another thin slice of angel food cake and freeze it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds so good. So a lot of things. Yeah. Those are things are really good. And you can make your own um, ice creams. You can make those sugar-free, um, especially if you use the the sugar-free sweetened condensed milk recipe. It's a little extra step, of course, to make it, but... Um, but that's a good one. Sorbets and sherbets. Um, those are easy to make yourself in your ice cream machine sugar-free because you don't have to have the sugar-free condensed milk. Um, you could just use, you know, your monk fruit or, or something like that with your fresh fruit pulp. And, um, and those are really good. Um, like I said, fruit salads, um, Watergate salad. We were talking about that one earlier. Um, I mentioned the Jello puddings and stuff, and Kristen had said that they do make the pistachio pudding in a sugar-free variety. So you can make the Watergate salad with all the fruits and nuts and stuff like that. You'd probably have to leave out the marshmallows, I guess, or make your own marshmallows maybe. Mm-hmm. But um, that's another another interesting twist there. Um, chocolate dipped frozen bananas or strawberries or pineapples, you know, any of, any of those fruits that you get from the, um, edible arrangements. Edible arrangements. Yes. Yeah. Those are really good. Like that's a really good summer treat as well. Yeah. And you can do those. You can make those yourself or you can buy them. So, Yeah. yeah, I like the idea of, not trying to recreate the entire recipe from the ground up. Yeah. I think too. we talked about this before when we did sugar free holiday recipes like around Christmas time on season one. Yeah. Um Yeah, it was especially it's a if pain. you're first starting off because like I was looking at a lemon bar recipe and I was like, what is that? And there's all this weird stuff. I'm like, why does it have this? And does your mom, does your recipe have that? And, you know, and it was like, this is like nothing resembled your lemon bar recipe. Right, right. And I thought, why wouldn't we just make your lemon bar recipe and then just take the powdered sugar out and use swerve? Right. And then, okay, so that works. It tastes good. Let's try instead of the flour using the almond flour. And yeah, it, just, just do like, them one at a time. One, at a time. one change one Instead thing at a time. Just trying yeah. to like recreate this whole new recipe that's like sugar free, low carb, gluten free, keto, vegan. You know, all in one. Right. Yeah. I. You know. Uh, honestly, and I've I've thought about doing that too. I've had it on my to do list for months now to try my homemade um, oatmeal cookies and do them sugar free, low carb. Blah 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 blah, and. I keep thinking I it's it's such a daunting 
prospect because of, of having to make so many substitutions to make it low carb um that that i've been tempted just to do it and only replace the sugars and see if it works and then start trying to to change out the flour or something it's kind of like your coffee when you first stopped putting sugar in your coffee you didn't also get sugar for creamer and like change the brand of coffee you know you just stopped putting sugar in your coffee no and then no i went from sugared creamer to a sugar-free creamer right and then you stopped putting sugar in your well, I, I didn't put sugar in my creamer at all, in my coffee at all. Back in the day, you did, yes. Before I used sugar-free creamer. Right, that's what I'm saying. You changed one thing. Bef- you didn't change the no, whole no, no, thing. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I quit doing creamer. I used powdered Powder creamer. Powdered creamer, yeah. And I went, and and sugar, and then I went to a sugared creamer. Not and, to a sugar free. Then you went to sugar free. Yeah, but it wasn't because I went to I was trying to eliminate the sugar. Mm-hmm. I just decided that I liked that flavored creamer better than the powdered creamer. It when I went to the sugar free, it was because I was trying to get away from the sugared creamer. Right. Right. But regardless. I mean, but I had not used sugar in my coffee right. for years. But you didn't like just completely like rechange your entire coffee regimen. You just did one little change at a time. Well, yeah. But it but those changes were not related to each other at all. That's what way. I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. You didn't just reinvent coffee. No. Well, I would say that's a good recipe experiment for our blogs. Maybe take each of us take a... Um, recipe that we would like to convert to sugar-free and experiment with it yeah it could be that would mean that we would actually have to cook yeah <laughs> why well, cook baking is a different thing <laughs> I mean, we would have to actually okay i bake all the time so i can't really right i mean we we can link um the my uh cookie recipe that i did for the sugar-free holiday recipes Mm -hmm. you know like Uh i uh took that and completely well i made it as low sugar as i could well some sugar i did well and you know we did uh i did one that was the the traditional jello cake um and i and and this is the the whole problem like kristen was talking about you you know if you're trying to take something and make it sugar-free um, sometimes you're, there's so many pieces to that recipe that you have to change to truly make it sugar-free that it's a failure at the first try. And I did the Jello cake. Um, I was thinking, I'm going to make this a low carb, low sugar, blah, 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 Jello cake. And so I bought a Duncan Hines low carb, sugar-free cake mix and then I had the sugar-free Jello, and I tried to make it like the regular Jello cake recipe, and it didn't work. It it was really dense and very eggy, and it it didn't um, it didn't rise the way a cake normally does, and and it was just very unpleasant. Now I might try it again with sugar-free Jello and a regular cake mix. Mm-hmm not trying to go with that diet you know diet all around yeah yeah i mean there are some things that you just can't replace well there are and there's some things that don't work right if you you, because they've changed it so much to make it low carb Mm -hmm. uh yeah like that recipe would not work without the eggs in it right like you can't substitute the other things that you would substitute in a eggless cake right and and likewise, I think the the density issue was that the the low carb cake uh, was already is already going to be more dense because it's not traditional flour, mm-hmm. and it's the like rest rice. and the recipe flour. had more egg in it to start with. So then, when you add the extra eggs and oil that you add into the jello cake to make the jello work 
it um it just doesn't it didn't work so but i think just substituting only the sugar free jello for the regular jello i i theorize that that will work just the same so that that's the way i think well, are there any other thoughts on sugar-free recipes, or do we want to experiment, maybe come up with our own idea for a sugar-free recipe? Well, I have some ideas of, like, what summer desserts are, now that I really thought about it, because I'm like, okay, chocolatey, gooey, and heavy that's winter time i i agree summer I, that's is fruity yeah. and light and maybe cakey but not but light cake not yeah not, yeah, not, like not pound cakes cake-y. not yeah. ganache yeah so um yeah i'm actually i'm kind of thinking of like a shortbread huh? Ooh, that would be very nice yes With fruit or something mm-hmm like yeah, I may a, I may go ahead and try those oatmeal cookies that I've been threatening to do, but but I like the idea of doing the the uh, the cake with the the fruit on it too. Well, I think I'm going to try doing the s'mores, uh-huh. just because I've been trying to do a baking challenge every month. Oh, so um, yeah, I'm really curious about how you make marshmallows. So mm-hmm. yeah, I'm going to try the marshmallows and try the graham crackers and you know get some sugar free chocolate and mm-hmm. see where it all mm-hmm. comes out. Other, it could be a disaster. One of the other ones I'm thinking about is it's an old tradition of ours to take like sugar dough cookie dough sugar and cookie. make a pizza oh yeah where you put like strawberry cream cheese on it after you bake it and it cools you put strawberry cream cheese and like fruit slices i love that oh that's a great summer recipe and i yeah. bet you there's a good sugar free or make sugar cookie dough with right stevia or swerve uh-huh. or whatever mm-hmm. it's called uh-huh. instead uh-huh. and then that go would, from there because that would that be, would be sh- lower sugar right it wouldn't be low carb i i was actually looking at sorbet recipe or actually sherbet be rec- sherbet recipes mm-hmm. because um one of the things we, i was talking about earlier was um i love having a sherbet float or uh, we we often do punch like um you put the lime sherbet in and you um fill up the punch bowl with um Seven up ginger ale, ginger ale, or well, seven up or ginger ale, mm-hmm. either one. They both work really well, and um, and then as the the sherbet melts, it it just gives this yummy. And you can do it with any flavor, you know, of sherbet. But one of my favorites is the lime, and I was thinking that would be really good to if I could figure out because I, I was complaining that I look all the time, um. And, you know, all these companies make sherbet, but they don't make a sugar-free one. And that's what I want is a sugar-free sherbet. And there's no reason why there shouldn't be a sugar-free sherbet out there. So I may try to make a some kind of little sherbet so I can have my little summer floats. Do you have to Sounds make that good. an ice cream maker? Yes. Well, um, if you... If you don't, you can put it in an ice cream maker to make sorbet or sherbet. And and if you don't know the difference, the sorbet has no dairy product and sherbet does. It'll have either milk or cream or sherbet. something. Sherbet. <laughs> sherbet. Sherbet. It's actually sherbet. Sherbet. <laughs> sherbet. But we're in the South. Sherbet. <laughs> um, and the, the, uh, the sorbet has none. If you make a sorbet and you don't put it in an ice cream maker, you just put it in a pan and let it, and then you scrape it out with your ice cream scoop. Oh, okay, then, like a bread pan or I something. Think I've seen yeah, like a yeah. Loaf pan. A lot of people do it loaf pan or a flat pan. And you just roll scoop rolls of it out. Um, it's a lot more granulated and icy, and that's called a granita. Mm, oh, okay. And that would work too. So okay, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I see people put stuff in the blender and then they freeze it. And I'm like, I wonder if that tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's basically what sh- sherbet. That's basically what sherbet is, is fruit with sweetener. That sounds good. And some water and cream. And mm. you just freeze it. Sounds yeah. good. 
it might be good. It's worth a try. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what are we talking about next week? Next week, we are talking about our worst habits. Oh, Ew. that could be interesting. Okay. <laughs> so, be thinking about what is your worst habit. We will be talking about it next week. Okay. And we will reveal our worst habits. <laughs> our worst habit. We're going to try and keep it, too, you know. Uh, <laughs> oh, my maybe. gosh. I don't know which one is my worst. <laughs> I know. I've got to think about that. <laughs> yep. So keep thinking about ones. it. Ew. All right. Okay. Okay. Wrapping it up, we would like to thank Cake Mix Studios and Creative Audio Tech for <laughs> our equipment and our music. Also, if uh, you haven't been checking out our blogs, you need to go to modernmusings.net and check out our blogs because you're only getting half the conversation here. Also, you need to check out our Facebook page, MMC Chat, and give us a like, give us a share, send us an email. We want to hear from you. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.